Hey yo everybody, Zach Cords here with RevZilla and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider coming at you from a very windy Los Angeles. This is the show of course where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. Our guest this time around has a motor and it is a cycle, although it's not a conventional motorcycle. That is a Super 73 RX, an 80 pound full suspension electric bicycle that can be yours for about 3,500 bucks. So the website says, <laughs> the website says it can get me to the office with the battery juice that it's got. And I guess we'll find out on the very first pedal powered daily rider. Let's go. <laughs> Okie dokie, everybody. Here it is, Super 73 RX. The spec should be a little easier to go through than usual, I suppose. <laughs> no engine where there's normally an engine. There's a motor though, it's back here in the hub. Yep, well, electric motor and the cord, uh, where's the cord run? Oh, it's on the other side. Um, so yeah, the cord runs up to the electronic control unit and the throttle up here. Whoop, hey, oh, geez, Louise and cheese. I forgot that I left it on. You know, because when it's idling, you can't hear it. <laughs> Still learning about the e-bikes, evidently. <laughs> That's pretty embarrassing. Full suspension, so that means there's a swing arm back here. There's a derailleur um, to adjust chain tension because the geometry of the back wheel as it relates to the crank and the chassis changes as the suspension swings. So that's why there's a, a derailleur even though there's no gears to change. Front suspension is pretty burly, 35 mil stanchions and yeah, inverted fork. The suspension is fully adjustable, which is pretty nifty. Um, and over here on this side of the wheel, you got um, a little four piston caliber with a 200 mil, 203 millimeter rotor, I think. So pretty burly, uh, pretty burly stuff and darned beefy tires. I think you can agree. So there you have it. This uh, little faux gas tank is the battery pack appropriately, which comes off with a key right here. And as we know, it's already on. <laughs> so let me be a little careful with that. <sighs> Okie doke. Time to pedal. <sighs> this throttle here allows me to go approximately 20 miles an hour, I believe, in this mode. We'll talk about ride modes a little later. And if I have my thumb off the throttle, I have to pedal, uh, or I can turn on the pedal assist, which I'm going to do. I'm going to dial up the pedal assist to, I'm going to dial it up to level four because I want as much pedal assist as possible. So now if I pedal or use the throttle, I can travel at 20 miles an hour in mode two. Like I said, we'll get to modes later, but that's how I'm moving. <laughs> oh man, yellow light at the bottom of a hill, a bicyclist's worst nightmare. But a good chance to talk about specifications for a minute, as we normally do in this part of a daily rider, it is a 32 inch seat height on the Super 73 RX. Um, but needless to say, the standover height is very narrow. <laughs> so 32 inch seat height on a motorcycle is sort of standard sort of mid height. But on this machine, pretty easy to flat foot unless you're quite short, I would say, because uh, not much in the middle of this sucker. This battery here, the capacity is 960 watt hours and the maximum output of the electric motor is about 2000 watts according to super 73 which uh hopefully we'll be able to experiment later with maximum output see what that actually feels like <laughs> so this is where we deviate from the daily rider route normally we'd be cooking along that big road over there but we're going to scoot down here and get on a bike lane avoid the freeway for what i hope are pretty obvious reasons i put the put the Super 73 RX on the Daily Rider scales and it turns out Super 73's claim is pretty much accurate. It was 81.5 pounds, 81 and a half pounds. Very heavy for a bicycle, very light for a motorcycle. <laughs> right, following the signs for the bike path. We're gonna go up this here on ramp. Yeah, barely putting any effort into the pedals. Throttling up 20 miles an hour. Check over the shoulder, make sure we're merging safely. Holy Moses, the wind. Yikes. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Okay, almost got blown off the road there. <laughs> Big beefy tires saved me though. This is the uh, not, not a part we usually see of Los Angeles on the, the Daily Rider, but uh, there it is, Los Angeles River. Where the debris meets the sea, as they say. All right, there's a little spot we can pull over here. I'm just gonna check over my shoulder, make sure there are any faster electric bicycles or cyclists coming up behind me. And uh, you know, this is all well and good traveling 20 miles an hour, 
But what we can do is we can go into the app here, SCP-73, and then we can go to mode selection and we can go to mode three. As you can see here, class three, pedal assist only 28 miles per hour maximum speed. So we're gonna save that, exit, and then we're in mode three now. I'm gonna leave the pedal assist in four, which is maximum. And then we're gonna hit the road again. Let's see if that makes a difference. And we're gonna start with the downhill. So that might help things a little bit, but there we go. Yeah, 25, 26, 27. Nice. So this is 28 miles an hour. This is much better. This makes me feel like I'm actually using a motorized vehicle. I just have to pedal this speed. Like if I want to pedal fast enough to actually put force into the crank, I have to go like this. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to spin the pedals like this. The bike sees that I'm giving it the old college try and puts all that juice into the engine. And here we go, 27, 28 miles an hour. Now over on the other side of uh, LA River there uh, is a 710 freeway where we normally go south and we go over that bridge. You can see in the distance, pretty wide angle. You might not be able to see it. Anyway, I can't actually see what traffic's doing on that side, but even if it's not that bad, let's just imagine that it is dead stopped because as bicyclists, and I'm a bicyclist now, I like to feel superior that we're, you know, we're beating all those cagers and cars and all those people burning dinosaur bones to get where they need to go and here we are just pedaling along with our nice quiet electric bicycle not stuck in traffic at all we're on the open road one thing that's a little weird uh coming from a motorcycle anyway is that the brakes are switched so the right hand is my rear brake and left is front which presumably you could mess with that if you owned the bike but um, but yeah, it's a little, a little strange to get used to if you're expecting the motorcycle setup. At least I think that's right. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Rear brake is the right hand. But in general, the brakes are stonking really, really good. Good feel, good power. Yeah, I'm with you, Astro Van. Why isn't this light turning? There we go. And we're off. Let's see if we can accelerate as quickly as in late 80s, early 90s Astro Van. Oh, we sure can. Look at us go. Okay, a little awkward now. Keep it moving. All right, Anaheim Street. We are taking a right. And there's a fellow cyclist. I wonder if he is okay with me not wearing spandex. Now we can emasculate him with our electric engine. Motor, sorry. This is awkward. I don't really want to look at his butt. I need to pass him. Oh, and we're going as fast as the semis, now we're going slower. Yeah, I gotta say, this is the part where I make it a point not to ride bicycles on roads like this because I don't like playing tag with semi trucks. Whereas when I have a motor, sorry, an engine, myself, like a scooter, a motorcycle, something like that, I feel like I can, I can do it a little bit better. I can uh, make my own way instead of just sort of making bike lanes where I can and whew, trying not to get run over. All right, there's a bike lane here. That's good. Keep the trucks away from me, please. Let's try and peel off here if we can. All right, here we go. We're off the beaten path a little bit. <laughs> Going pretty fast. Ah! <laughs> oh, didn't last very long, but that was a fun little detour. So yeah, this particular route, arguably not really made for bicycle travel in general but that is an advantage of the super 73 rx as opposed to a, a, a you know a scooter or a small motorcycle or something like that um electric or otherwise is that you can use alternative paths that would be illegal perhaps on uh, a full-size motorized registered vehicle <laughs> um, so yeah, i suppose there's something to that and as far as registration goes while we're on the subject you don't need a motorcycle license to ride this. You don't have to register it. it. doesn't have to have a license plate. It's a bicycle. So, you know, it's a, definitely a, a way into longer range, faster transportation <laughs> with a much lower barrier of entry. You don't need all the stuff that you need uh, to have a scooter or motorcycle or something like that. An advantage, certainly. Okay. 
I'm calling it right now. The seat is not good. My official review of the seat is in and it is very bad. <laughs> when I got blown off the bike shell that first time there, my clap my foot on the ground to save myself and stub my toe on the pavement. And my toe really hurts right now. <laughs> Pretty embarrassing. Oftentimes on Daily Rider we talk about uh, ergonomics of the machine, like how it fits the human body. And uh, I did talk about the seat height and uh, standover height earlier. It's very approachable, as you might expect, being a bicycle and all. <laughs> Um, one thing that I think is uh, worth noting is the ergonomics for pedaling are really, truly bad. I mean, I can't straighten my legs at all. I can slide back on the seat, but th there's really no way for me to put any actual amount of power into the, into the pedals. And even if I could, the cranks are really short. So you just don't have a lot of leverage to push the vehicle down the road. And I know what you're thinking. That's why it's got an electric motor, Zach. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I guess what I'm saying is they arranged the rest of the bicycle around the fact that it would be powered by an electric motor. It's not a bicycle that would work well as a bicycle by itself that also has electric assist. It's much more a hybridized bicycle uh, that was designed knowing full well that it would have power because you don't really want to pedal it as an actual pedal vehicle. Damn, my toe hurts. Hmm. Green light and rough. Here we go, pedaling. <laughs> yeah, I just can't motivate myself. Can't bring myself to pedal with any real effort. <laughs> Especially in mode three here. Just makes more sense to kind of swing your legs around and pretend. Let the, let the <laughs> motor do its thing. I really like mode two because you can get pedal assist on multiple levels or you can use the throttle, which I think is kind of nice. It's nice that you can choose but I appreciate that level three offers the ability to go a little faster, <laughs> which is obviously helpful. All right, here we go up our first hill. I think this sidewalk actually turns into a little dirt path here. So rather than use the asphalt, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into adventure mode here. <laughs> Sweet. Let's go in almost 20 miles an hour up this hill. Putting a little bit of effort into the pedals to help it along. I'm certainly having more fun than I would be if I was on the asphalt over there. Dodging trees, hitting little jumps. Ah, ah. <laughs> a big bump. Oh, jeez. It's getting tight, getting real tight. Tight quarters. <laughs> this is great. I'm having fun. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, and back onto the concrete, and we'll rejoin the road here via jump. <laughs> Sweet, that was fun. I got my blood pumping a little bit, pedaling up that hill. Right, first stop sign in the neighborhood test here. See if we can come to a complete stop. Oh, and I can't do the footless stops. Oh my gosh, come on, we gotta go faster. Ugh. Standing on the pedals, keeping at the business. <laughs> Seems to me the electric motor does pretty well when you already have some momentum and it can kind of keep cranking, keep everything moving. But when you have to start from a stop, it really just isn't able to put out enough power to, uh, I mean, that was pretty good. Already going 15 miles an hour and I didn't do that. Yeah, so I guess it depends. Definitely starting from a stop doesn't have a whole lot of get up and go right off the bottom. Uh, as you might expect from a, an electric motor which has lots of torque. But anyhow, yeah, the climb in the hill here is, uh, we're definitely not keeping up that 28 miles an hour top speed. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's doing anything right now. Come on, man. There we go. How do you get going six or eight miles an hour for it to start doing anything? So on a normal daily rider when we're reviewing a motorcycles, conventional ones anyway, we often talk about uh, how the machine handles around town. Brake feel, throttle response, <laughs> um, and general balance at low speed. And on the Super 73, I would say that uh, in general it's very 
approachable and easy to use because it weighs less than 100 pounds for crying out loud. You probably saw that one coming. Oh, I'd really like to make this light. Come on, Super 73. Oh, son of a beach. All right, well, we're stuck at a traffic light. We can talk about the dash, which we do sometimes. This dash is pretty simple. <laughs> you can adjust pedal assist mode here with the up and down. I can say level three, level two, turn it all the way down, turn it off if I want to, but I'm gonna leave it at pedal assist level four because I want all the help I can get. If I hold this button down, uh, it turns on the headlight. See, a little headlight there. And I was actually pretty impressed with the headlight. Actually casts a pretty good beam, which is good if the thing can go 30 miles an hour, right? And then you can toggle, I believe, yeah, so I can show range, uh, pedal assist if I want to on the main screen, uh, total mileage on the thing. Uh, yeah, 24 miles out of range. What else we got here? Total speed and speed. So pretty simple, but it's kind of keen. Nice that you can change the pedal assist on the fly. You don't have to do, um, open the app for that just to... Um, Open up Adventure Unlimited Mode, Mode 4, the legendary Mode 4, which we will experiment with here eventually. Okay. It's very stable at speed. Uh, and like, I'm not the only person in the world that can ride a bicycle with no hands. Obviously it's not anything particularly special, but I can tell you that it's very, very stable at this speed. I'm guessing they did that on purpose because who wouldn't want stability at speed, especially on a bicycle that can go uh, so fast. Oh boy. Another steep hill here. I'm pedaling. I'm doing it. Oh God, I'm losing, losing speed. Mayday. I don't really want to pedal any harder than this. Eight miles an hour. Christ on a crutch. Come on. Now oh, I got to pedal past Corvette guy's house. Uh, he's laughing at me with all his horsepower or her horsepower, whatever. You know, I was joking around in the intro about how it's like sort of a motorcycle because it's a cycle with a motor and yuck, yuck, yuck. But uh, what this is really is a moped. That's what moped stands for, right? Motor and pedals. I think that's actually a good way to describe this bike because the pedal assist, just like it does on a classic moped, um, you can pedal it along and get it going or, and then it has an engine that like kicks in and helps you. Uh, so that's kind of what this is. Moped. It's the modern moped. I don't know if uh, Super 73 RX owners are going to be like, yeah, man, I read a moped. <laughs> Probably not. Too rough and tough for that. More Debris. Yeah. Super 73 crushing that Debris. And all I meant by that last comment, obviously, is that uh, it's kind of the monster truck of electric bicycles, right? <laughs> like, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of aesthetic hoopla. I would say. It's also designed to work, which it does, but there's certainly some, a lot of thought went into how it looks and maybe people wouldn't be as excited to say they ride in a moped. Well, just like that, we've arrived at Lover's Lane. We often talk about passenger accommodations for the bikes that we're riding. I'm told that the, the RX here has a passenger option. You can go two up. I didn't experiment with that, honestly. But I can tell you that uh, the passenger probably isn't going to like the seat because I'm sitting where the passenger would sit right now and it's not great. Right up to maximum speed in class three. I got to say, once you're actually uh, cooking along here, it's pretty satisfying. It actually feels like you're making pretty good time. But as soon as it smells the hill, you'd be down to low 20s at best. All right, we've made it to the highest elevation on the daily ride, we've got about half battery. Uh, so that bodes well for getting to our destination because all downhill from here, as they say, <laughs> not literally all downhill, but um, considering we're gonna lose elevation between here and our destination at the office, yeah, that bodes well for the battery lasting the whole time. Don't pull out in front of me, kid me. I would have waited, but okay, that's fine, I guess. Oh, got to jump on the brakes here. We're, we're stuck behind traffic on the twisty road, even on the electric bicycle. Ooh, going for the pass. <laughs> go, Super 73. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say that no one's buying a Super 73 so they can enjoy a nice twisty road like you might on a motorcycle. <laughs> uh, but I have to say, down through the twisty section of our daily ride, Handles pretty well. Decent grip from the tires. Predictable handling. All the things you're looking for, you know. Gotta be worse. I'm gonna tuck in. 
see if that gets us any MPH. 30, holding at 30, coasting at 30. 29, come on. Oh, we're going straight into the wind now. 28, gotta start pedaling again, get that motor working for us. If nothing else, downhill is a good time to give the motor a little break from uh, all that work it did to get us to the top of the hill. And here we are, almost at the bottom of the hill. We barely used any battery at all. So there you go. Makes sense. Sometimes we, there's another place where we like punch it and do a wheelie. So let's see if we can do a wheelie. Oh my God, definitely not. I have to go a little slower. Anyone behind me? No one behind us. Speed limit 45, that should be enough. Let's see if we can do a wheelie. Ugh. Can't really do it. There we go, a little bit. It's very difficult to judge with the electric motor working with you. <laughs> Maybe we'll try again later. Whoa, hey! Hey, boy. That car is behind us. We gotta move over a lane. Move over. That cool with everybody. Thank you, sir. I really, really wish I had mirrors. That's a big mess. Nice. Just a little stoppy. These brakes are burly. I like them. So you might say all the suburban riding that we've done around town, it's like, you know, I, I've pedaled through industrial neighborhoods and along bike paths and stuff like that. So, so I live in Los Angeles and this is the daily rider route and I don't make the rules and sorry if this isn't quite right. Uh, but I think the suburban riding or, you know, even urban um, in a place like um, New York City or San Francisco or London, I don't know, whatever, uh, in, in a big city would um, be a place where something like this would probably make more sense. You know, you could take more efficient routes across town, um, that kind of thing. And on that topic, I guess it is an electric bicycle and operative word there being bicycle. So you don't have to wear gear if you don't want to. I'm wearing the same thing that I wear if I, son of a yellow light. Gotta be kidding me. Anyway, I'm wearing gear like I would be on a motorcycle uh, because that's, uh, you know, I'm kind of the person I am, I suppose. And um, I'm wearing a full face helmet because that's the setup I have for the camera. <laughs> so some of it is circumstantial, but honestly, a lot of it is the fact that this thing goes 30 miles an hour. And if you take a digger at 20 or 30 miles an hour on asphalt, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be gloveless or jacketless. Um, that would be a serious bummer. And uh, yeah, a lot of the marketing materials around electric bicycles in general are, yeah, t-shirt, shorts, uh, open face helmet, I don't know, something that looks cool, right? Because it looks cool and I want to look cool. All I can say about that is, if anyone told me they were buying one of these bikes, I would say, put some gear on. <laughs> At least wear long pants and shoes that cover your ankles and I don't know, some, some leather gloves or something like that. You don't want to wear a jacket because it's hot out, it's summertime, fine. It's fast enough and powerful enough that you can get yourself in plenty of trouble. And if you hit the deck going that speed, you're going to really wish you had something between your skin and the asphalt. So I'll stop preaching now. Just saying. All right. Through this intersection, I think we're going to pull over. Going to pull over now um, for a pretty simple reason, really. We are down to 36% battery on the Super 73. This is a fast road though, and I gotta say, while we're at it, I'm gonna go to mode four, unlimited throttle. Unlimited. All right. Let's see where unlimited gets us. Also, unlimited and a stout headwind. Give it a tuck. Yeah. Oh, this whole no pedaling thing. This is where it's at. <laughs> oh my God, the wind. Unlimited hasn't really knocked my socks off, I gotta say, but uh, I'm enjoying not pedaling. I'll say that. Don't hit me, Toyota Camry. Thank you so much. Oh, five seconds. Just make it through this light. Come on. Uh, <laughs> made it one thing i probably should mention along this ride is i you know i'm a motorcyclist first and foremost uh, i'm not a reviewer of bicycles i did this one because it uh is blurring the lines a little bit between 
bicycles and motorcycles, obviously. Um, I have ridden a few other electric bicycles though, and I know that the Super 73 does not stand alone in this category of, yeah, the sort of blurred line electric motorcycle thing with uh, uh, fat tires and um, and quite a bit of capability. I don't want to pull up. I had to use the horn. Glad I had an opportunity to do that, you know. Show that it's got, it's got a horn, it's pretty cool. Anyway, there's a company called Juiced in particular that seems to have a couple options that are pretty good. Um, and when I posted uh, the Super 73 on my Instagram account, I did get people saying, uh, mentioning a couple other companies that make bikes that are comparable to this and they wanted me to try them. Sorry that I have not done that yet. Maybe I will sometime in the future. The only other bike that really stands out to me as something that's pretty comparable and, and useful compared to the Super 73 um, was a Trek uh, commuter bike that I tried. Okay, get out of the way here. All right, guy's on a motorcycle. Got fingerless gloves for some reason. Anyhow, sorry, got distracted by the ambulance and the fingerless gloves. But I did try a Trek commuter bike at some point. Much more conventional bicycle, conventional bicycle sized um, wheels and tires. Uh, big dorky fenders to keep the rain off you. Uh, a little blinky light that's embedded in the rear fender um, and pedal assist uh, and uh, throttle, I believe. The one I wrote had throttle. Anyway, sort of comparable to this one in so much as you go, I think 20, 25, maybe 30 miles an hour um, with pedal assist. Uh, and to me, that bike seemed pretty reasonable, you know, like definitely more practical, made a little bit more sense. Jeez Louise and cheese. So many fire trucks. Bad day for a fire with all this wind. I hope it's a small fire. So all that is to say, um, that might be where I would look first personally because I don't mind looking like a dork. Um, and that bike seemed to have a little bit more practical usability than a uh, big kind of fat tire thing like this. The seat was more comfortable, stuff like that. Um, but also wanted to mention that there are other machines in the category that are worth looking at, not just this one. Okie dokie, cruising over towards our dirt long cut. Oh, this is where all the fire peoples went too. Uh-oh, hope we don't see a fire. Last thing I'll say about uh, what I do not know about electric bicycles, which is a lot. Uh, I did get a couple questions on social media about like, can you unlock this thing? Can you make it go 60 miles an hour? Uh, and I don't know. And uh, I, I don't really subscribe to that anyway sorry i would like if you want to go 60 miles an hour just get a motorcycle just get your motorcycle license get a scooter get a motorcycle electric motorcycle gas motorcycle whatever and just do that why why do you want an electric bicycle to go 60 miles an hour i don't get it but if you want that you know sure go for it okie doke on to our off-road test which ought to be pretty fun on the old super 73 rx it's got them big burly tires we actually already did a little bit oh my god <laughs> We actually already did a little bit of this, didn't we? Along the railroad tracks. Well, I gotta say, unlimited mode is exciting when you're off-road. <laughs> oh my god. Well, we're booking. Into the wind, on the dirt, 25 miles an hour. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right. We gotta look for a jump. Looking for the jump. Where are you, jump? There's the lead up. <laughs> oh my god. Let's hit the big one. That was great. Big jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Pretty gosh darn good. Super 73. <laughs> that was wicked. Now I want to hit some bigger jumps on it. So we're on our last sprint to the office here. Sometimes this is where we talk about uh, comparison models. And uh, yeah, like I said, I just talked about um, really briefly other stuff in the electric bicycle category. I did want to bring up the Zero FX. I think that's what it's called. It's the sort of small urban electric bike from electric motorcycle manufacturer Zero. And for that, you of course need a motorcycle license. That's a very clear jump from something like this, which is a little, a little bop about and that sort of skirts the law a little bit. So yeah, it's a, it's a different different thing, that Zero FX, but I did think it was kind of interesting that it's two and a half times the price. It goes two and a half times as fast <laughs> and it weighs eh, three or four times as much, I think. If it were my money, I would consider that seriously because um, I'm a motorcyclist at heart. But you can't argue with the, um, 
don't know, with the with the actual usability and uh, and practicality of an electric bicycle. We made pretty good time here. In fact, just about time to turn off toward the office here. Got a, in this left lane here. Right. So as I'm going through this little intersection here, I'm modulating the throttle, which it does sort of. It's very difficult to modulate if you actually want to be kind of discerning in how much power you deliver. But I noticed, especially if you do that, it can kind of stick a little bit. It's not much, but something. I'm a little disappointed, I guess, considering this thing's brand new. Well, I think the battery pack and the motor are sucking wind a little bit. We're down, I don't know, near 15, 20% probably of uh, juice left and unlimited mode is barely good for 26 miles an hour um, and that's class four and before we were in class three we were doing the sort of faux pedal and we were doing what 28 so yeah it's losing losing steam a little bit but uh you know as we as we all do when we get tired i suppose last little bit here super 73 you can do it <laughs> wide open 17 miles an hour Ugh. almost there we can do a little u-turn test <laughs> sometimes we do the u-turn test on daily rider this u-turn test ought to be pretty darned good full lock yeah one parking space less than one parking space u-turn kind of cheating because it's a bicycle i know but hey king of the u-turns that's uh not nothing. Okie dokie. There you have it. Super 73 RX. Uh, let's see here. So what are we at with battery? Because the, the unlimited mode is sucking wind. We're down to 15% battery. And what are we at for range? This is nine, oh, nine kilometers. Is that right? Yeah, five miles of range is what it says right now. So it's a tired little turkey. But it got us here. That's not bad, man. I'm gonna shut it off so that I don't hit the throttle and shoot the thing out from under me like I did before. Also, no need to rev this thing up. We we heard all the <laughs> engine sound we can along the way here. That was pretty wicked, I think. Super 73 RX, full suspension, uh, 30 miles an hour, 3,500 bucks. Huh? So let's do some Instagram questions, shall we? First one here is from Corey Bach 58. He asks Dank Nooners question mark. If you don't speak the lingo, what Corey's asking about is wheelies. Can you do sweet wheelies on it? And no, Corey, I can't. Someone can, I'm sure. In fact, I think on my Instagram post for the Super 73 RX, someone even uh, posted someone's profile who said, this guy does rad wheelies on a Super 73 or an electric bicycle or something. So yeah, I'm sure if you look around, you can find someone who does awesome wheelies on this thing, but uh, not me. It's kind of tricky to wheelie. Uh, as someone who prides himself on wheelies, it's a little, a little difficult. I might have to practice up and come back to that. Next question is from Kramer. What are your thoughts on the trade-offs between weight, power, and range? Have they struck the right balance? And what would you prioritize? Yeah, interesting. So this is gonna change based on your environment a little bit, right? For me, I would just as soon have more weight and more power and more range, <laughs> like a, an actual electric motorcycle. But you know, that's just because I live in Los Angeles. So there's like, it's all freeways and it's all like big open roads, unless you live in like a little neighborhood where you can putt around on something like this, in which case it might make sense. I think what they did was they aimed for people who um, are going to use it on an evening to, to go to dinner, or maybe they're going to go to work on it down a few blocks or, or whatever, 20 blocks or something. And for that, I think it's pretty good, right? Because you don't really need more than 40 miles of range. Our ride was 25 miles basically to get here and we have five miles of range left. So, you know, talking 25, 30 miles of range is what I found the actual range to be. And I think that's probably enough for most people. You don't really need to go that far. The only reason I did it is because I have, have this route that I take to test motorcycles. <laughs> so it's kind of unfair really to hold this thing to that standard. And I think in general, they struck a pretty good balance for, for urban riding. Me though, I'd probably just uh, get an actual motorcycle. My old friend, Feral Chimp, uh, asks, if you run out of battery, are you getting home on pedal power or calling a friend? <laughs> I like this question because obviously the suggestion is, uh, you know, is it a bicycle that you can pedal or is it really just like a super heavy bicycle that's, you know, it's an electric motorcycle that's dressed up as a bicycle to skirt the law. It's the latter. I'm not pedaling this thing home. It's miserable to pedal and I would never try to get anywhere on it if it didn't have an electric motor to help me. 
Angela Rivelli says, not sure this will be a good option for the LA commute. Seems more suited for a city like San Francisco. Very well spotted there, Angela. That is true. Like I said, during the ride, tight urban environments, it would be much better than something expansive like Los Angeles. Scotty Too Hotty asks, how comfortable is it to pedal if the battery dies? It's miserable. Scotty Too Hotty, don't do it. Wayne Holtquist says, I bet it handles the jump in the dirt portion better than anything so far. And you know, I saved this to make sure that I addressed it, but yeah, I think it did. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's uh, Tenere 700. I uh, handled the jump pretty well. <laughs> but yeah, this thing was darn good, man. Once you're posting on the pedals a little bit and you can use your knees and your, and your legs, I mean, yeah, I would hit much bigger jumps than that on this thing for sure. Last question from the Honda Rebel 500. More fun or practical than a scooter? Question mark. So I wanted to end on that because on the one side, you have the fact that the Super 73 doesn't require a license plate or registration or insurance and it's light and small and you can take the battery off with the key and bring it up to your apartment and charge it. And it has all these things that you can do that you can't do with a conventional um, electric motorcycle or with a scooter or whatever. And that has real value, especially in a place like we said during the ride where you can take bike lanes or you know change your route in a way that would be advantageous when compared to a conventional motorized vehicle. The other side of that is that I personally, I, you know, I, I live in Los Angeles. I have this ride that I take I, where I live is pretty expansive and big. I already have a motorcycle license. I would just get a scooter like for 3,500 bucks. You can get a 150 CC scooter that'll go on the freeway and it'll go 70 miles an hour and you have storage under the seat and you can carry two people and I, you get really good gas mileage. And I, I just like to me, that makes so much more sense. I would definitely get a scooter before I got one of these. But that doesn't mean that someone out there, uh, you know, doesn't have a circumstance in which this makes more sense. And if it's a gateway to more motorized two wheel vehicles, then I say flipping go for it. <laughs> so thank you for your Instagram questions. Thanks for riding along. Uh, bear with me here. We're going to put this sucker on the daily rider leaderboard. Yep. All right, everybody, welcome inside the RevZilla West offices here and our ever evolving daily rider leaderboard. I guess quick refresher on the motorcycles that we've ridden in Daily Riders so far. You have Kawasaki versus 650LT at the top there. Yamaha T7, Honda Africa Twin, Triumph Street Triple R, and Ducati Street Fighter V4S. That's the top five. And then uh, the rest of the machines here as well. So I got a little tag here for the Super 73 RX, which I have marked e-bike. So where do we think it's going to fall on the leaderboard here? You get, um, it's sort of ergonomically naked bike style thing. Um, then again, the seat is terrible. So that's something to consider in your, in your daily rider needs. Maximum speed, kind of low. Price low, but not really that low. I think we can probably just cut straight to the chase here, right? And we can place the old Super 73 RX at the very bottom of the daily rider leaderboard. Bottom line here is that we brought a knife to a gunfight. That's not really the Super 73's fault, but uh, yeah, I would probably rather ride um, a hev heavy, relatively underpowered uh, cruiser or a two-stroke from the 80s, or even Jix or Dave with no mirrors and no speedometer and no regard for the law, than I would uh, an e-bike for my particular commute. As we mentioned, of course, you know, your situation might be a little bit different. If you're traipsing around the narrow lanes of a tight urban environment, you might prefer the Super 73 RX to just about any of these motorcycles. And if that's the case, more power to you. Anyway, that's all we have time for here on Daily Rider. As usual, I hope that you had fun. I hope you survived the wind. I hope you learned a thing or two. And hopefully, I'll see you next time on Daily Rider. Holy crap, a tumbleweed. <laughs> tumbleweed in Los Angeles. Must have come to LA to make it big, just like the rest of us. Good luck, tumbleweed. Oop, oh, might run you over. Oh. Tumbleweed crossed the street safely. Good job, he's in the bike lane. Good luck, sir. <laughs>